question of high strangeness. Uh, early in the year 2003, I went to Lavra, Nevada, and uh, by accidentally, I met these wonderful people. And um, that, of course, led into me eventually going to the museum. So I want to document that for you and take you right along. So um, I'm going to introduce you to some of the uh, main players that I met originally in Laughlin, Nevada. And then after that, we'll just keep going to Missouri. So enjoy the visit with a person of high strangeness. This is, this is the piece of the ship that we were talking about in, in our interview. And I'd like to remind you of the story about that strange looking fish thing that was over my house the day before the earthquake. Well, it, it was the same color as this here. And I think I could have easily mistaken these groves here. For fish scales. I think, I think that's, you know, that's what they're doing. Like. So, of course. So now the doctor. <coughs> very, very rare, uh, very expensive for uh, metals. Now, this has the consistency of aluminum. Like, like waves. Right? Yeah, like all this because I'm not like that. That's what I. Uh, uh, unfortunately, most of uh, the science is very, very well educated. She will have common sense. Go to the common sense should tell us that with my education, Sometimes when, when we go into cops or mm -hmm. things, you know, my wife's mm -hmm. stuff, and so mm -hmm. it hasn't stopped yet. Well, see, we've had, we, uh, we had problems with the safe again this morning. Not yeah, as severe. That's what he was telling me. Yeah. We had, yesterday they had to drill it. This time they had to come up with the electronics and open it, but it was giving codes. It was giving all these uh, uh, strange codes, because I, I went in to get it with the code, you know, the combination. Yeah. And it wouldn't open. It came up, you know, the error messages and stuff. And they did. They did not have to drill it, but they had to get it open with their electronic uh, key to open the safe second time. They'd be glad when you leave. I think so. <laughs> not, well, they say it's not going in there tonight. Not, yeah. And, and, uh, you know, it, it, that's what it reminds me of. Whatever the, you know, whatever I saw you know. before the earthquake. That's all I, I'm, that's all I'm yeah. getting from that. It's, yeah. it's, it's the, the rippling. The well, see, that's a, that, see, electromagnetic radiation, that's everything. That's, there's a spectrum. Light is only just a little tiny part of it. Some of it's radio, some of it's x-rays, some of it's gamma rays. Uh, we don't know what frequency this it might be. We've had people say it could be a transmitter. At, uh, up on the, on the uh, graph, the top uh, right Connor, uh -huh. this the fellow said it could be a transmitter. We just don't know what it's transmitting. You know what what the receiver would be, what the frequency would be, if it's transmitting, uh, you know, something that would cause that safe to the electronics in the safe to, to mess up. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I perceive sound from it. That's that's all I got or not. I read in that uh, thing at Dugway when I was at Dugway when they showed me that. They showed me pictures of UFOs and said, now we want to be able to uh, take down the, uh, these UFOs to reverse engineer them. And I said, well, have you got any fragments from any of these UFOs? We'll show you one right now. They said, here is a UFO fragment that was taken, given by the British intelligence from a Foo Fighter that was over Denmark, Foo Fighter was the uh, presetter uh, name of UFO. Okay. Okay. During the World War II, do we call them Foo Fighters? Okay. Okay. And this Foo Fighter or this UFO was flying, and the British planes were trying to chase up against it and try to shoot at them and missed. Well, it went ahead, and the projectile was recovered by British intelligence. They gave it to our army. And when I was at Dugway Proving Ground, they brought it out <laughs> underground, out of the vault, the same where I read the Majestic Report, and they're talking about reverse engineering. Here they're showing me an object about the size of that object. Looks very similar and said, this is the Army object. It's made of aluminum, silica. At that time, silica and aluminum could not be put in an alloy and put in an, uh, uh, into that kind of configuration. What happened uh, after that, 
the interview I did with Bob White did not turn out at all. And so when I got home, I made arrangements to reshoot, uh, reshoot Bob White. And, uh, but it didn't quite work out the way we had intended. So next thing you know, I'm in, in the, well, it wasn't really the middle of nowhere because we drove to, uh, we meaning Sean Yanka and myself, we drove to a beautiful Missouri, uh, Dodge 14 Tornadoes and went to the Museum of the Unexplained. And because this is a travel format, I'm not going to um, give you the names uh, on the bottom of the screen, so I'm gonna try to tell you who all was there. You already met Bob Gibbons um, and Dr. Jordan. So the next friend that is going to be involved in this little visit here is Monica Vine Smith that you know so well and uh, Bob White of course and um, and ever once in a while you get a glimpse of Sean Yanka that was uh, our cameraman for the time so without further delay let's go to the Museum of the Unexplained in Reedville Missouri so enjoy well Miss Monica arrived Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> From Texarkana, driving all night. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Cool. I stopped and slept for a half hour. Did you? Yeah. Somewhere in, in Arkansas. It is so... That is a... On the side of the building here, and... Um, it is a, a picture of the encounter that Bob White had. Yeah. Visit with a person of high strangeness. As you know, we've been on the road for several days, actually weeks, to be exact, out running storms and things. We finally made it. And the gentleman you're about to meet is Bob White. And how are you, Bob? Just fine, and you? Yeah, just great. Anyway, we, we landed in your museum, in your office, and you had just started to point us to the wall. Um, right about some tests that we're going to detail a little later, but I want to show the list of the, yes. of the, um, so when you go right around here, and I'm happy to tell you we are smokers. Yeah. <laughs> I always put that in there. It's, to me, it's a discrimination issue. So my viewers know if they don't like it, they can close their eyes and listen. Same here. Yeah. Um, so, so here, if you go right down the line, please. Uh, it, you are right. in the process of trying to get funding to, to conduct these tests that haven't been done yet, right? All of these tests uh, can be performed at SMS. And uh, we found out that SMS has... Um, Dif what is MS? Uh, uh, it's the university in, um, in Springfield. Springfield, okay. And uh, Dr. Gibbons uh, was a professor at uh, SMS. And he knew, knows that they have all the equipment to do these tests uh, that have to be performed. And of course, uh, we we contacted them to do these tests, and they uh, they told us uh, at first that they couldn't do it because these uh, were all all the equipment was donated to them uh, uh, by uh, grants, and uh, we told them we were a 501c3, and that uh, we would like to contact the people that uh, donated all these things and get permission from them to use this equipment. Then they wrote back and said, well, yes, they could do these tests, and it was permissible, but they would have to have a professor uh, who would be willing to, to do it. And, of course, they would have to be paid for doing it. Uh, we offered to do that, and as of yet, we haven't heard back from them. Mm -hmm. So um, why we're being stonewalled, I don't know. But the test that uh, will prove uh, conclusively whether or not this is... Uh, extraterrestrial or terrestrial, terrestrial. Mm -hmm. is uh, is on the board there and there's some tests on there that have to be performed uh, that we just added uh, like now we're going to do uh, we have to do con conductivity to find out if the uh, object is uh, superconduct uh, we have to do the melting point uh, which is being performed right now by Robert Golka at MIT uh, we have to do laser lights to see whether or not this thing is encoded which it may be very, very, very possibly be encoded. It's a little windy here. <laughs> yes, it is. Front door must be open. Mm -hmm. Now we have to get a percentage of the uh, object elements because there's a percentage after you total it all up. Uh, the percentages that we have, there's a small percentage of uh, elements that are missing. 
We have to test the cues to see how high they are. We have to check for uh, neobedium. Uh, we have to uh, check for spa spatial gravity tests at full density. Uh, we have to check for uh, crystal lattice structures. If there's more than five, then we definitely know that it's extraterrestrial because all we can produce on this planet, all the known crystal lattice structures in, in every, in every uh, uh, element is five. And if we can get more than five, it's definitely extraterrestrial. And I believe we'll get more than five. Uh, we have to test the PN junction in this. And the most important thing that we have to do now is when we were in uh, uh, Lafayette, Nevada for the UFO convention in uh, February, uh, we were staying at Harrah's, and uh, the uh, object was kept in a digital safe overnight in the suite of rooms that we had. And the next morning, we could not open the safe by putting the code in, and the engineering could not open it, uh, security couldn't open it, and finally, they had to drill it open. Mm -hmm. So both the uh, professors, uh, both the scientists that were in my group at the time, Dr. Gibbons and uh, Dr. Jordan, both felt that there, this was emitting <clears throat> uh, electromagnetic rays. Mm -hmm. So when we came back, Dr. Gibbons has a friend in uh, Springfield uh, who is a dentist. And he uh, volunteer, voluntarily gave us some x-ray, dental x-rays. Mm -hmm. Well, we placed the object on the table. We placed one dental x-ray under the object and then as you can see <clears throat> Dr. Gibbons made this. Just a minute here. A little interruption here. All so right. Go right ahead. When we got back to Reed Spring, Dr. Gibbons made this and as you can see there's little holes cut in all the way around. This was placed over the object like that. Dental x-rays were placed here and removed at various in intervals. There was one placed underneath the object itself. Now, dental x-rays should not be exposed. There's no way, in, no way possible for dental x-rays to be exposed using just a piece of metal. We had four exposures. Okay, I see exposures on film one and two, which is from the side. That's the big, the big part of the object, but from the side. And then, of course, the major exposure with the two black spots are from the film that was under the object for 48 hours. And that's what matches the object, uh, the two lobes of the object. But our dentist, and we've had this uh, checked by my dentist, his assistants, and then a re regular radiographer that say that these are all uh, authentic x-rays. There's no uh, uh, dark room accidents. There's no deliberate exposure or uh, uh, chemical exposure or anything made in the, in the uh, dark room. But uh, everyone agrees that there's some exposures on one and two and then the main exposure there that's uh, under the object. Well, when we put the uh, x-ray film over the object, we can see definitely two different exposures and it's two lobes.